I believe you. There's another slide there. I see that people have been sliding down it. They're nuts. So as we round around the point here, we get a beautiful, clear and uninterrupted view of Brunel's cliff and suspension bridge. I never talk about it on the way out. Everyone's so excited about being on the boat and seeing the bridge that they don't listen to a word I've saying, so save it for when we're coming back. It was all the idea of a local wine merchant, William Vick. William Vick left a thousand pounds in his will for the building of a bridge across the gorge. He was under the impression that the works of nature could be improved by the works of man, which is an unfashionable idea nowadays, but it wasn't in his time. So he left this money, and the money was invested by the merchant venturers of Bristol until it became the sum of uh, 10,000 pounds. That's when they held the competition to see who could come up with the best design for a bridge. Brunel eventually won the competition, 1832, after some arguing. And the bridge was completed many years after his death. Officially opened on December the 8th, 1864. When people look at the bridge, and when they look at pictures and drawings of the bridge, they always assume that the, uh, the bridge is completely symmetrical. And of course it's not. Uh, both towers are entirely different. The Clifton Tower is a much, much finer structure altogether. It's slightly thinner, it's more tapered and slightly more elegant. And it also has huge arrow slits in the sides of it, making it considerably lighter. It stands on quite cavernous rock. Brunel, of course, thought that he could spam the gorge in one a single go, but the other engineers of the day, particularly Telford, uh, disagreed with it. And they forced his hand into building the enormous red sandstone buttress on our starboard side. Just under the bridge here, on our port side, you can see uh, three climbers Amazing climb there, especially with a yellow helmet. Amazing. Up to our port side, we're just passing a little cage in the cliff face, Giant's Cave. That used to be a place of worship. With all the quarrying, they've dug the cliff face away here until you can no longer access the cave. And then a local artist, William West, dug a tunnel down to it. it took him two years to dig the tunnel together. It's underneath the, uh, the Camera Obscura now. The Camera Obscura used to be a windmill where they ground tobacco and in a terrible storm in 1777. The sails of the windmill were spinning around so fast that the whole thing caught fire and burned down. They got brought up by William West. Back in 1828. You'll be able to just see the top of the Camera Obscura, the observatory, back to our port side.
So now that we've uh, come up in the world, we can do get a better view of the Clifton Rocks Railway. You can see the lettering to our port side. There's quite a, a heavy uh, movement to raise money and reopen the railway. Which I think it's quite a cool idea. You'll be able to jump on in Clifton, pass down through the rock face, get off of the carriage and step out onto the portway and immediately be run over by a truck. <laughs> A beautiful little row of uh, red brick houses there, supported by pillars, is the Colonnade. The Colonnade was a beautiful little row of very posh shops, so that the ladies visiting the spa could buy um, the equivalent of a Prada handbag, some kid gloves maybe, I thought. Right. Calm down well in the 1700s.